So good evening, everyone. This is John, John Rollins. And today, of course, is Wednesday uh, and it's 7 p.m. So that means that it's time for our weekly Strive sessions. Strive, strategies to remain informed, strategies to remain victorious, strategies to remain empowered. Okay, and as we've said on many occasions, our goal on these sessions is to provide some type of information that will be uplifting to those of us who are in the body of Christ. We want to keep you encouraged. We want to let you know that there's a reason to go on. We want to give you some information that may be just what you need to deal with what you're going through right now. Okay, and uh, we've been sharing so many different topics over the last several weeks. Actually, we've been doing this for a few months now. And uh, we'll continue to do it until we're directed otherwise. But this is an assignment that was given to me by my pastors, Pastor Horace L. Mingo, the senior pastor of Jesus People Life Changing Church. And uh, he said, let's just do something that will try to uplift those of us who are in the body of Christ and give us a reason to want to keep trying. Uh, you may uh, check in on tomorrow, at, normally at 730. Pastor Mingo is on and he's actually giving some words of life. He's doing some lessons to, uh, that are spirit related. And so uh, I encourage you, if, if you find something that you like between what we're doing, let us know, share the uh, conversation, leave a comment. Just let us know that we're doing something that's helping to make a difference for you. That is our goal. Okay. And our topic for today, our topic for today is a good fit, a good fit. How many of you have ever seen something advertised as a one size fits all? And how many of you know that it is highly unlikely, based on the people who are in your circle, that you're going to find a situation where one size fits all? I, um, I you know, I, 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 I've purchased gloves where one size, was, one size was supposed to fit all. I purchased socks where they were the wide range from, I think, from like a 6 to a 13. I purchased hats that was supposed to be one size fits all. One size does not fit all, okay? And I don't know if it's because I have an unusual size or, or maybe they just weren't thinking about me when they made it, or maybe they weren't thinking about you when they made it, okay? But <laughs> one size typically doesn't fit all. And, and what we want is we want to have something that is a good fit for us, okay? And I was thinking about this and the whole idea of a good fit and, and what, what I was, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about us and the different roles that we play and the different things that are required or expected of us, how so many times we have to be multiple things, uh, it just one of us, but as you heard the old phrase, we have to wear multiple hats. Uh, for instance, you may be a parent, okay, but you also you may be a, a business owner, you may be a supervisor an employee, you may be a member of the team, you may be a student. There's so many things that are required of us. And how do we make sure that given the expectations that are placed on us, the requirements, the things that are required of us, how do we make sure that we are able to fit properly in those different uh, roles or, or the different responsibilities? Um, and you, you probably have heard the phrase before, you want to be kind of a, a glove in a hand. You want the, the glove to work with the hand. They both need each other. Without the glove, the hand is cold. The hand could get damaged. But without the hand, the glove is just sitting there not fulfilling a purpose. Okay. So we want to be able to meet the expectations, but we don't want to just meet them. We want to find a good fit for us. Okay. And so and if you probably haven't figured out, the idea behind this is dealing with relationships. Okay. Maybe um, you're in a relationship, you have a role in a relationship, and, and you're forcing yourself to be something that's not a good fit for you. That relationship may be with, a co uh, with a, an employer. Uh, that may relationship may be at, at church. Okay. But you're, you're operating, you're functioning in a capacity, but it's just not a good fit for you. Okay. How do you make sure that you fit well? You've heard the phrase trying to put a, a square into a, a square peg into a circle or the, or the reverse. Okay, sometimes you can bang all day long. You can you can force, you can twist, you can turn, you can do whatever you can to try to maneuver it. Okay, but it's it's not going to fit. 
And so often we're in situations where we're trying with everything within us to meet those expectations, but it's just not a good fit. Okay, how do we become a good fit and make sure that we're fulfilling all the things that are required of us? Okay, well, I'm, again, I'm talking about relationships. Okay, but here, here is what I what I found, and I, I looked, and I, I discovered this on a meaningfullife.com. Okay, the four ways or the elements that every relationship needs as far as compatibility is concerned. Okay, and so when you think about two different individuals, two different parties, somebody uh, could be someone who is dating, could be someone that you're married to. Okay, how compatible are you with that individual? Um, you may love them, you may like them, or you may not be able to stand them. Okay? But if you're in a relationship and the compatibility suffers, or is not meeting the, the expectations, okay, uh, is going to create problems for you. And what I found out is that if we have issues in one area of our life that we don't tend to, many times it starts to fall over, uh, bleed over into other areas of our life. It starts to impact us. Uh, for instance, if, if we are not doing a good job of managing our finances, it's going to create stress at home. If we're having stress at home, we're going to take some of that to the job. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of these relationships and try to minimize any conflict that's occurring so that it does not adversely impact the other areas of our life. So how do we become compatible and make sure that we're a good fit? So some of the issues of compatibility can be a make or break of relationships. And again, I found this from uh, meaningful dot, meaningfullife.com. The word compatible gets thrown around a lot in discussions. You start talking about whether the relationships continue or the relationship should end. Um, how do you define compatibility? What are the areas of compatibility that are required? Okay, and so here's what they said on, on that article. They said there are four primary types of compatibility. Okay, and all of those, all of those things, they have some impact. Okay, but some of them are subject to change, but not, but there's one that if, if you're going to stick with it, it's going to have an impact on the long haul. Okay, so when it comes to being a good fit in a relationship, one of the things that we want to look at is what is your physical compatibility? What is your physical compatibility? Okay, and, and I, you know, when you start talking about physical traits, physical characteristics, I know that that sounds kind of superficial because uh, most of us, who we are on the outside has very little to do with who we are. Okay, our physical makeup does not define who we are. I tell people that you, if you have traits that you're proud of, you should thank your parents, you should thank your grandparents because it was their combination that provided you with the physical traits that you have. Okay, so I know when we start talking about physical traits, that could sound kind of superficial, okay? But there should be some type of compatibility between you and the person that you're in a relationship with. Um, that, that find something about that person that you appreciate. Okay, and, and typically, again, it, it, we're talking about physical physical compatibility. You've heard the phrase "beauty is in the eye of the beholder." You may look at a person in a relationship and say, "You know, I just I I can't see those two people together." But they found something between the two of them that they appreciate about each other. That physical co compatibility. Okay, and if you're going to be a good fit for that person or a good fit for that relationship, there should be one of the areas of compatibility that you give attention to. But be careful, okay? Physical compatibility, uh, our, our makeup, it, it's, it'll probably change over time, okay? The way that the person looked when they're in the teens, the way that they looked in their 20s, okay? 15, 20 years of, of life, it, it could cause a lot of changes. So make sure that that physical compatibility isn't the only thing that you're using to determine whether that person is a good fit for you. Okay. The second thing you want to be looking at is what is their emotional compatibility? Or is there emotional compatibility? Okay. You have a physical attraction, okay, but when it comes to the emotions, you don't, you don't, you all don't connect. One person may have an idea of what's fun is, the other person has a different idea. One person may be okay with being uh, kind of communicative in the relationship. One person may be really silent. One person may be expressive when it comes to their relationships or their feelings. A person, other person may not be ex as so expressive. Okay, don't, don't just make sure, make sure that there is some level where you all are able to connect. 
uh, every healthy relationship, there has to be some type of uh, feeling of, of trust, a feeling of commonality, okay, where it is nurtured by those emotions, okay? All right, so you have the physical compatibility, you have the emotional compatibility. The next one is intellectual compatibility, okay? Intellectual compatibility, two people who respect each other's intelligence. You don't want to walk around thinking that, you know, I'm with this person, this person, they don't have a clue. Okay? That, that is going to show itself in some way, and the other person is going to be able to figure it out. Okay? Some type of emotional uh, compatibility where you all are able to stimulate each other. You, you share ideas with each other. You share interests of, of some things together, and, and that those interests could be it could be the, you like eating in the same restaurant, you like taking trips together, you like talking about the weather, you like watching sports, you like watching crime shows. Make sure there's something that you all have in common where there's an appreciation for the other person's intellectual level. Okay? And, and I'm telling you, these are the things of compatibility that will help to make people a good fit. And I'm not saying that it has to be every area that has to be covered, okay? but I, I do think that we want to give attention to these areas when it comes to our compatibility. And then the final thing that they uh, mentioned on the MeaningfulLife.com is there has to be an eternal compatibility. And, and they said that means a shared vision. There has to be something that both of you all look for in the future something that will live beyond you. When, when you finish saying good morning to each other and one of you are called home, okay, there has to be something that you all had in common that both of you worked toward that, has, that will live beyond you. Okay? Maybe that, that, that eternal piece is, is what you were doing with your family, what you're doing with the children, the legacy that you're leaving. Okay? Um, for me, that eternal compatibility means a shared faith. Okay, I believe that we will be in heaven together or that wherever and the new heaven come down to earth, okay, I believe that wherever that eternity is, we will be there together okay, in an eternal compatibility, shared vision. Okay, and I said that other, the first three, the, the physical, the emotional, the intellectual, those are important, okay, but you don't want to build your whole, you don't stake everything, your whole claim on that. Okay, but that eternal compatibility, I believe that's non-negotiable. If it, and the scripture says that, that two can't walk together unless they agree. It talks about not being unequally yoked. Okay, you want to make sure that who you unite with, that you all have something in common where you're looking for another future or something better in the future. Okay, and, and I'm going to end with this because I, I found a song. Because but if, if you have not found a physical person that you feel that you're compatible with, I want to introduce you to someone who is always a good fit for us. And, and for me, that's that's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. And, and uh, Jonathan McReynolds, and I, I'm, I've become a fan of this young man. I, I listen to his music over and over. I put on YouTube and I'll play it over and over again. But he sings a song called Make Room. And, and on that song, he says, where I'm, uh, I think, where I'm broken, you are whole. And I, I'm going to see if I can get this right. Uh, where I'm doubting, what I'm doubting, you are sure of. Okay, what I'm missing, you you have it. And I, I now I listened to the song before I came in. Okay, but but what he says is the areas of our life where we don't believe that we are a good fit, and we don't we haven't been able to find someone who's a good fit. He's saying that he will make room for Christ because Christ is a good fit. I don't care where I am in life. I don't care what I've done in life. I don't care what seems to be missing in my life. I found fulfillment in having a relationship, and I found satisfaction in having that relationship with Christ. Okay? And remember, I'm talking to the believers. I'm talking to those of, us, those of us who said that we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. He is a good fit. He, in fact, he's probably the only one who will be that good fit. He deals with us on an, an emotional level. He deals with us at our physical level. He deals with us on our intellectual level, and by all means, he deals with us on an eternal level, okay? I hope I give you something that makes sense to you. I hope that you found something that you can use with it. I hope you find a good fit, all right? Hey, guys, this is John. And again, this is the Strive Session. Strive Session, strategies to remain informed, strategies to remain victorious, strategies to remain empowered. If you heard something that you like, add a comment, uh, share it with someone. And uh, we try to be here every week, every Wednesday at 7 
And then again on Thursdays at 7.30, Pastor Horace L. Mingo, Senior Pastor of Jesus People Life Changing Church, he is there giving some, I'm talking about some word, some, some steak word. All right? Hey, guys, we end the way that we always do. Hey, and if for nothing else, if you don't remember anything that I said, I want you to remember this. Okay? You. You are important. All right? You all be blessed.